What the heck is up guys, it's Jacob here, and today we're doing a video on installing PFSense, alright? So, um, I got this question asked today on the forum by uh, user James, so, um, and I, 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 it just occurred to me that, you know, I've done a bunch of videos on PFSense, but I haven't really showed you guys how to install it. Now, I have another video on creating a bootable USB stick on my channel, which works for pretty much any operating system except PFSense. PFSense is actually a little bit more difficult to install. Why? I don't know. It's just, it's, it was always a little bit more difficult. So I had to hunt around on Google forever to find this um, tool right here. And this is what you need to install PFSense. You can use probably other tools, but this is what works for me. Um, it expands the images and makes them so that you can boot them off a USB. You can also boot them off a CD, but no one uses CDs anymore really. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a bootable USB here um, using this software. Now, um, I'll actually upload this software to my forum website so you guys can download it because I don't know the actual uh, URL to this site. I actually hunted forever and ended up finding it on a forum and downloading it from a forum a while ago. But um, So I'm just going to go ahead and upload it to my forum. I'll provide a link below and you guys can just download it from there. But anyways... Um, this is the actual USB imaging tool. So what happens is um, you have your device once you plug it in. Uh, let me just kind of um, here. Let me let me go ahead and just unplug it and start over again, so I can show you what it looks like. Okay, so once you open up the tool, it looks like this, and you plug your USB in, and it's gonna. Windows is telling me I have to format it. Just that doesn't matter right now. So this is it. It's the Sandisk Cruiser Micro, whatever. Um, anyways, uh, the USB has to be a decent speed. You know, you can't have a really, really old USB stick because sometimes they don't work. Um, also, it should be at least like two gigabytes in size for this image, for a PFSense image. Um, one gig might work, but that's kind of pushing it. it. You should have at least a two gig flash drive laying around. So anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the reset button. Um, that's going to probably, uh, it says it's going to clear all the devices. Uh, it says they'll be inaccessible. So all the files, all the everything on the device is pretty much, it's like, re it's like uh, formatting it kind of. And it's just going to um, <clears throat> delete everything on it. So what we're going to do is restore an image on here. So in order to do this, we have to access our PFSense image. For me, it's on my um, 2950 server. So let me go ahead and access that. Uh, dot seven. So if we go here, operating systems, and then uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is actually, you can see that it's not showing up here. And that's because when you download an image, usually off P the PFSense site, it's going to be in a, a dot .gz form. I'm going to just go ahead and hit all files. It'll be in dot .image, dot .gz, or something like that. So these are my two PFSense images. Um, I have a an uh, AMD 64 and i386. It just depends on what processor you're running. Uh, personally, on my uh, access gateway that I'm using for my PFSense, it's actually an i386 image because it's a 32-bit processor, uh, and I think it, it's an Intel processor on there. So, anyways, but in uh, this is for a 64-bit image if you want to run that, but that didn't work out so well for me. So anyways, there's like a million images, by the way, guys. If you guys go on the website, it's actually up to the 2.1 version right now. Um, but just grab the memstick, this memstick release, and usually that worked, that worked out just fine for me. And it's .image.gz. Also, make sure, um, if you guys do grab an image, make sure it's a VGA console image because that'll help you out a lot. If you don't get the VGA console included, then it's not going to be as easy to set up when you set up your, you're going to have to, what you're going to have to do if you don't have a VGA console image is you're going to have to use the, um, <clears throat> what's it called the SSH you're gonna have to secure shell into it but you, you can't secure shell into it through an IP address because you have to set that up inside the actual operating system so you'd have to SSH into it with a serial connection which is a little bit more difficult so anyways just to keep life easy just use a VGA console and you could just plug a monitor into your machine and load it from there so I'm just gonna go ahead and open up this um, i386 image so what we do is it's going to say, do you want to restore this this image to this device? And we're just going to go ahead and hit yes. And basically, it's going to make this USB in a 
in a you know it's going to make it a bootable USB. It's going to expand all those those um, files on the USB and make it a bootable USB. And it's going to restore this image file onto the um, USB to make it bootable. So um, it's actually rather quick. It's not a big image, you know. We saw it, it was like I don't know, like 70 or 80 megs or something like that. So it's not like you know loading a Linux or a Windows operating system where it takes you know like an hour or something ridiculous like that. But anyways, once it's done. I mean, I'm actually, this is pretty much the end of the tutorial for it right now. I mean, there's really not much else to show you. Um, once it's done, you just literally stick it in your machine, and, um, hey, that's what she said. You stick it in your machine, and you just boot into the USB, right? So, um, you guys should know how to do that by now. If you guys don't know how to boot a USB, then go ahead and watch my uh, tutorial on that. I have it somewhere. I don't even know what the heck it's called, but look for it. And I'll show you guys how to boot into a USB, because... Booting into USB, you just do it through the BIOS, and it's pretty simple. And if you don't know how to boot into USB, then perhaps this is a little bit um, <laughs> advanced for you. But anyways, um, yeah, you just boot into the USB, and it'll just boot up just like any other operating system. But again, it's not. There's no GUI or anything. It's all. It's sort of like working with a Linux operating system. In fact, it's free BS. It's a free BSD operating system. Um, PFSense is embedded in free BSD, so it's all command line. And it's all. Um, you know, just you have to type up the commands and crap. So it's, you know, there's not really any user interface really. But it is a little bit easier than setting up something like a Linux machine or whatever. But that's pretty much it for this one, guys. This is the tool you need to um, boot, uh, to make a bootable USB image of PSNs. I will include the link to that in the video description below. And you guys can just grab that off my forum site. So if you guys have any more questions, Go ahead and post them on my website, thehackhub.com, slash forms to get into the forums. And that's pretty much it for this one, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and like always, have a good one.